right now joining us on the Boardwalk Honda Hotline. Follow him on Twitter at Vinny Iyer, writer for the Sporting News, covering the NFL. Joining us now, Vinny, how you doing on this Wednesday? Good. How's it going? Doing pretty good. So the breaking news that came down just a, about an hour ago: Aaron Rodgers' biggest contract in NFL history. I think one of the things that stands out to me, Vinny, is that on one hand, is yeah, you're you're paying a guy for his value to your franchise. We've seen how poorly the Packers play without him. But the other fascinating storyline with all of this is. People over forget about the fact that the Packers are a very unique organization. They don't have a billionaire owner like the other teams do. It's not like the Cowboys with Jerry Jones or the Patriots with Robert Kraft. This is a community ownership. So to me, this also says how healthy the organization is financially, that they don't have a billionaire owner, and yet they're still able to pony up this money to their franchise quarterback. Yeah, I think it was just a matter of time. And then also probably intentionally a matter of time on the Rodgers camp side because they wanted to see all these contracts shake out, Odell Beckham Jr. being the latest and looking at what Jimmy Garoppolo and the Kirk Cousins and Matt Ryan got here to elevate their salaries. I think there was a good uh, indication of how much Rodgers should get, and you saw that. Just a matter of setting it up because he's setting his own market. and whenever you have those deals, there's no limit to this, literally, because you're going to a new stratosphere. So with Aaron Rodgers, you figured this was going to be done right before the season. Here it is. It makes a lot of sense. you got to reward the guy. And uh, a lot of the players don't get that attention, but when you're the best quarterback in the NFL and quarterbacks are getting paid, you're going to get your money. One of the interesting things, you mentioned Odell Beckham Jr. So you got Odell coming off an injury, Rodgers coming off an injury. What does it say that the perception about players and injuries may be changing when it comes to guys getting paid around the NFL. Yeah, sometimes you have to just realize, is someone else going to pay him that money? And the answer on both of those fronts is yes. If those teams have passed up, uh, if you're not going to pay him what he's worth in the market value, some other team is going to do that. And I know you can uh, be very stickler as a team uh, if you've got a deal in place, like the Falcons with Julio Jones, but it all comes down to where your market is and if you can uh, get the demand to meet the supply there. And uh, I, I think there in those situations, the Giants, a big organization, the Packers, the organization that have rewarded guys like that in the past and don't spend a lot on big time free agents. So they're going to keep their own big guy there. And uh, that's what it affords you to do when you're always uh, at a lot of positions going for homegrown talent. Do you think that the NFL is going to have to start making some adjustments to the salary cap? Because these salaries are growing almost faster than the salary cap is. And you look around the league, Howie Rosen with the Eagles, Brian Gunhurst with the Packers. The trendy thing right now is for the, these executives to be these salary cap wizards instead of the traditional, like the Packers had Ron Wolf for years. He was more of a, you know, an, a talent evaluator. So with the league having to bring in more and more of these salary cap guys to handle the gymnastics and making all these salaries work, do you think we can get to a point where these salaries are going to outgrow and outpace the salary cap in general? Yeah, I mean, you're to a point already where there's so much invested in a quarterback where you really either have to uh, get bargain players and free agency to build the rest of your team, or you have to... Uh, pretty much sacrifice the rest of the team and keep drafting young players to fill holes. The quarterback just makes so much of your salary now. So not necessarily how much money overall the salary cap is, but how it's so far tilted to quarterbacks where if you splurge on one guy, it typically happens when you have a rookie quarterback with a capped four-year guaranteed deal that you can make those moves. So you're to the point you're a veteran team that's going to win with a lot of your homegrown talent that's not getting a lot of money that's young or have the young quarterback with a few veterans around him. And that's what kind of what the Rams are doing there with their model. Benny, this is Ryan staying on topic of guys with their contracts. There's a guy looking for a contract uh, named Des Bryant. So still, still off the board, still available. Where do you see him potentially landing and uh, the type of contract that he'll receive? Well, at this point, it's getting really tight for him to land with anybody. There's been all kinds of teams with wide receiver issues. The Jaguars don't seem interested. The Patriots don't seem interested. He's got to settle for a role 
that he doesn't like, which is going to be a number four, three receiver on a team at best. He doesn't really play the slot, so he doesn't give you that value. He really is slowed down, so he's not necessarily a home run hitter anymore. So he's pretty much a big body that you can throw the ball up into the red zone and hope that he comes down with it. But the problem is, does he fit on a young team with the way he is and is going to ask for the ball? He's got to be in a lesser role. Probably not. Does he fit on a veteran team that has a lot of unselfish players and are winning in the receiving core? Probably not either. So he's just kind of caught in limbo with his diminishing skills. And now that deal, if you go back to the Ravens and what they offered, they're moved on with Michael Crabtree and John Brown. But Des Bryant probably should have taken that at this point, uh, given that the Browns didn't uh, want to work out a deal with him. Speaking of the Browns, uh, we saw with Hard Knocks, Michael Kendricks, giving out a lot of information about the Eagles on Hard Knocks last night. And then we find out today that Michael Kendricks is getting hit for insider trading. Uh, is this one of the more bizarre stories that you've ever seen with a player, you know, when it comes to losing money? We've heard about guys putting up you know, bad investments. You know, hey, I, I invested in a restaurant, my buddy, or a car wash. Or I remember Lamar Odom was paying for 20 guys' cell phones on his plan at one point. Uh, but insider trading is a whole nother level of just getting in trouble with your money. Yeah, it's, it's nothing I've heard of. But you look at guys in the NFL, and a lot of these retired guys, and uh, there's another moment, I think, in Hard Knocks there with Carl Nassib yep. helping the players and uh, trying to show them how to invest their money and how it makes a lot. So you've had, heard a lot of these cases of players losing their money and going bankrupt, but now you hear a lot of cases of guys going to the next level and investing and knowing what they're doing with the big money that they have so it doesn't happen again. So and maybe you, you, it's eventual that the, some player was going to cross that line and you have that here. On Hard Knocks, we saw more of the Eagles versus Browns game from last Thursday night. And I know a lot of people are focusing on the Eagles and Wentz and Foles and the offense, but I'm still looking at, Vinny, the defense. The defense actually played again well versus the Browns that night. They played well in the first game against the Steelers. To me, I think that... This Eagles defense could potentially be better in 2018 than it was in 2017 with the additions of Bennett and Nada. What is your perspective on the Eagles defense heading into 2018? Yeah, I think that's going to be the strength of their team, as funny as it says, with the uh, offense uh, being a part. But the offense has got some hiccups early with Carson Wentz. We're not sure about him. we got Alshon Jeffrey hurting right away. Some of their running backs are hurting. So... The defense is still the backbone. It's really why they were able to go so far last year, even with them scoring a lot of points. So, yeah, I think that's going to be a steady part. They're going to be healthier. They're all around. I think they're a little bit deeper in some areas. I think a little bit weakened in other areas. But overall, I think the Eagles' uh, defense is going to be near the same level as it was last season. I don't think it's necessarily the best in the NFC, but it's definitely a top five. Benny, staying on the defensive side of the ball, I want your thoughts on Fletcher Cox. He's been on record saying he wants to be the MVP of the NFL. He wants to be a defensive player of the year. He wants to be the MVP. He's looking to really step it up another level this season. So what what do you expect from Fletcher Cox this year? Well, I, I think he's going to be outstanding. I think there's maybe a few guys at that level that create havoc and that you can put Aaron Donald probably in that category, but you can probably – only count to one or two more guys with the same impact from a similar position. So when I look at it, I, I think he, he's going to be outstanding. I don't know if he can play at the level of Aaron Donald, the reigning defensive player of the year, but I'd say if you're going to have any drop-off to the next level of defensive lineman, he's right there in that next group. Benny, switching over to the offensive side of the ball, as we all know, the team's coming off so many injuries in key spots. I've been I've been on record saying – that a slow start to the season could be coming. Do you agree with that line of thinking with all these injuries that they could drop like two of three or really struggle opening night against uh, Atlanta? Yeah, I mean, there is concern for that first game because the Falcons are a very strong opponent. They push them there in the uh, divisional playoffs. It was a grind of a game there. So uh, I think that's a concern in the first one because Atlanta is very talented. A lot of people see them as a potential return to the Super Bowl with their lineup in the – very solid team all around. So well, I think that is a concern. If you're out of the gate slowly, I think it's going to be hard overall with that schedule. And you have the Rams, Vikings, and Saints and that entire South to worry about there. So it's going to be, it's going to be tough for the Eagles uh, to navigate 
just because the NFC is so tough and it, it was so tight to get through the playoffs that we had a miracle in one game, we had a qu- quick escape in one game, a few upsets. So it really comes down to the playoffs. I think any of those teams have an equal shot. But uh, right now, if you get a little bit behind, the biggest thing that puts you in a bad situation is not having the advantage for home field early. Vinny Iyer of the Sporting News joining us here on the Boardwalk on the hotline on 97.3 ESPN. Vinny, a couple more before we let you go. I want to get your perspective on the rookie quarterbacks. You know, Sam Darnold with the Jets, Josh Allen with the Bills, Baker Mayfield, the Browns, Lamar Jackson obviously behind two quarterbacks with the Ravens, and then you have Josh Rosen out in the desert with the Cardinals. Which of those quarterbacks has impressed you the most so far in the preseason, and what are your what is your expectations for those guys going into the season? Well, I think the guy that's impressed me the most is Baker Mayfield. I know he hasn't seen a lot of the first team work, really none at all there, but this way he's handled himself, looks in control, doesn't seem to be overwhelmed at all by the NFL. A lot of his game is translating well early with his accuracy, he's able to move around. I think he didn't rely on his athleticism as much as we thought in college. I think he was there, but in the NFL he can't because he's not a superior athlete to a lot of people that are going to be chasing him. So he's changed his game a little bit, but still the accurate downfield thrower that we saw. So he's proving why he should be the number one pick. And then you look at the Sam Darnold. He's done a lot of good things, but I think his profile is very similar to what we saw at USC. He looks just like he's advanced physically and mentally a lot of times, but then he'll make those mistakes that uh, cost his team or make an error here and there that makes you scratch your head given the high level of everything else he's executing. So I think it goes in that order, Mayfield and Darnold. I'm impressed with the way Lamar Jackson has improved a little bit in each game already. Big improvement there until the last preseason game. And then Josh Rosen, I think it's a bit of an incomplete with his thumb. And Josh Allen, done a lot of good things, but clearly when he had the work against another team's first team, he showed he was very much a raw work in progress. Every year in the NFL, Vinny, we see a team that didn't make the playoffs the year before make it the next year. Is there a team going in the 2018 that you look at and say, I, I just, you have to believe that that team is in the playoffs even though they weren't there last year. Well, I think you have to look at the way teams finished last year, and two teams obviously stand out here. The 49ers not losing the game with Jimmy Garoppolo, so they got to have a lot of high confidence. I know people have talked about the Bears as a team to watch out for, but I think the 49ers are a little ahead there in terms of uh, where they're going because you know what they're going to get from their quarterback. And on the other side, you have to go with the Chargers. The way they finished the season, had not been for a few of those close, tough losses early in the season with uh, Anthony Lynn's first year. Who knows how good they could have been there with their defense. And uh, now their offense is still pretty loaded without Hunter Henry. So those two teams for sure are uh, looking like a very strong playoff contenders. Vinny Iyer of the Sporting News has joined us today on the Boardwalk on the Hotline on 97.3 ESPN. Follow him on Twitter at Vinny Iyer. Vinny, always appreciate the time. And we only got about a week and a couple of days until the start of the regular season so we only got to stomach one more week of preseason yeah that's good and it's one that we don't even have to watch <laughs> game, so you can just skip it nothing's going to happen uh, unless you're really looking for that bottom of the roster uh, <laughs> depth chart and try to figure out every team's 53 man Vinny always appreciate the time all right thanks